Thank you, Mr. President. Um, most of us are, are busy today reviewing the contents of the omnibus appropriations bill that was released uh, late last night, actually early this morning. I've come to the floor this afternoon uh, with my colleague from Washington, uh, the ranking member on the Energy and Natural Resources Committee, to speak about the wildfire provisions. Uh, and more specifically, I'm here to explain why uh, we chose not to accept a flawed proposal um, from the administration to, and to, to really be here to, to give, I think, hope and optimism about a path forward for next year. I think it goes without saying that our nation's wildfire epidemic is a serious challenge. It demands attention from each one of us. Each year, the fire season seems to include new worse and shatters the records that are out there. 2015 has been particularly devastating. It seems like we didn't have a wildfire season. We had a wildfire year. And we all know that we've seen too much acreage burned. Uh, too many Western communities have suffered damage and, and tragically, uh, lives lost. According to the National Interagency Fire Center, more than 9.4 million acres of our country has burned through October 30 of this year. In Alaska, uh, where most of these fires occur, we've lost over 5 million acres during this period. For perspective, that's about the size of the state of Connecticut. That's what we saw burn in Alaska alone this year. Those of us whose states are impacted by wildfire all started this year in agreement that what we needed to do here was address a broken system that the way wildfire management has been funded is broken and that it's past time that we fixed it. We know we can't continue to underfund fire suppression, only then to scramble to borrow money to fight fires. And this all goes on while the fires are burning out of control many times. And we know that what we need to do is end this very disruptive an unsustainable cycle of fire borrowing. It, it drains funds from other programs as the agency is seeking resources. This fire borrowing concept is the one area I think that we have all been able to come together, uh, whether it's those within the agencies, uh, those uh, of us that are looking to, to address policy, the appropriators, we've got to figure out how we're going to stop the, the fire borrowing that goes on within the various accounts in an effort to respond to these wildfires. Earlier this year, as the chairman of the Interior Approps Committee, I, I set out to fix this very broken system. And under my direction, our committee reported out a bill to do just that. The Interior Appropriations Bill included a permanent, fiscally responsible fix for fire borrowing. It would have provided resources to the agencies up front, enough funding to fully cover the average annual cost of firefighting over the past 10 years. It also allows for a limited cap adjustment when we have these truly catastrophic fire years. The bill simultaneously increased funding for fire prevention efforts. It took steps also to return to active forest management. We thought that this was this was a, not only a sound approach, um, but addressed the fire borrowing, but also the forest management issues that so many of us are so concerned about. But unfortunately, we ran into a wall with the House uh, of Representatives. They wouldn't accept the language because of the limited cap adjustment. So instead, what we did is we worked across the chambers within the Appropriations uh, Committee to provide an unprecedented level of funding to address wildfires in the omnibus. Now, as I said, I'm still going through the omnibus myself and, and trying to figure out whether to support the overall bill, but I do think that it's important to, to, to recognize and understand what we have included in this omnibus. The wildfire provisions are both responsible and pragmatic. And, and the, the thing that's so important is it provides real money now. And it gives us the time to develop longer term real solutions. The bill includes $1.6 billion for fire suppression. This is $600 million over 
the average cost of wildfire fighting for the past 10 years. So it's 600 million over the 10 year average. It also includes $545 million for hazardous fuels reduction. And it also includes $360 million for the Forest Service timber program, which helps us, again, resume this active management of our forests. So what, what we have in this omnibus bill is more funding for wildfire than was spent during the 2015 fire season. And again, that was one of the, the most expensive fire seasons in history. So when you think about what we've done, Barring a truly record-setting fire season in, in 2016, fire borrowing should not be an issue for us in the rest of this fiscal year. We did this the right way, the way that Congress should deal with the government's responsibilities by making, making cuts elsewhere to pay for this within the budget. And again, this is, this is real money. This is money that is available immediately because we have done this through the appropriations process. Now, we have had many conversations, uh, Senator Cantwell and myself, many, on, many in this body, um, who were, were hoping to see a different proposal. Uh, the House had a proposal, uh, colleagues here in the Senate had a proposal, the administration had a proposal. Um, and they were hoping that it could be factored into the omnibus. But for a number of reasons, it was not included within the bill. And I think that that was a good thing. The proposal in question would have amended the Stafford Act to expand the purposes for emergency funding for major disasters to include fighting wildfires on federal lands. The House had included a similar idea in a forestry bill that it passed earlier in the year. But the irony here is this is a measure that the administration is, was now supporting, but they came out very strongly against this back in, in July, just a few months ago. The president's advisors issued a statement of administration policy objecting to the repurposing of the Stafford Act and the use of the Disaster Relief Fund for wildfire suppression operations. In September, the director of FEMA wrote an opinion piece about this, and he said that tapping the Disaster Relief Fund for wildfires would, quote, undermine the federal government's ability to budget for and fund responses to disasters, as well as to finance state and tribal public infrastructure recovery projects. That's what the FEMA director said in September. The Secretary of Interior, the Secretary of Ag, the head of OMB echoed that in a letter where they said, quote, we do not believe that Congress should modify the Robert T. Stafford Disaster Relief and Emergency Assistance Act as a means to addressing the escalating costs of wildfire. So they have, they have apparently changed their tune um, with regards to use of the Stafford Act. Here we are just a few months later, the administration is now proposing to amend the Stafford Act. And to do this, do this amendment in, in relatively short order where lots of things are happening, where unfortunately not many are getting enough sleep. So the, the, the concerns, again, um, are, have been echoed by many. The first, I think, uh, important reminder here is the Stafford Act itself is designed to provide federal assistance to state, local, and tribal governments to alleviate disaster suffering and facilitate recovery after a disaster has occurred. There is no precedent for accessing it to provide emergency money for disasters on federal lands. Second concern we've got is that this proposal doesn't actually end the fire borrowing. That's what we're trying to do here. What it does is create an account that is separate from the disaster relief fund that is subject to appropriations, which means that it's now empty. That fund may be there, but there's nothing in it, and it could remain empty. There's no guarantee that the appropriations will be there to fund the account or that the president will ever request funds for it. And if there's no funds in the accounts, then basically what you have to assume is that the agencies are going to have to borrow again. So we haven't fixed the borrowing. We have an average of 68,000 fires each year. And under this proposal, each one could require 
a separate presidential declaration once the initial appropriation runs out. So, I mean, how, you just have to ask the question, how does this actually work then? Does the Forest Service chief have to, have to estimate how much each fire is going to cost? What happens in the meantime while you've got all these fire burnings? Again, the agencies are going to be in a situation where they're going to be looking to borrowing. Now, even if we assume that federal dollars will be appropriated to the fund that's envisioned by this proposal and that the president will make a disaster declaration after he's asked to do so by cabinet officials, we're, we're still setting another troubling precedent here. The administration will effectively be able to decide to give itself money under the Stafford Act. This is not like giving an individual uh, money after they have suffered a disaster, a loss to their home or property. This is the administration being able to decide to give itself money. So the question is, is, do we really think that that's a smart thing? Finally, I think that this proposal is a missed opportunity. It was supposed to be coupled with a set of productive forest management reforms. And what we saw, I think, is a good start. There are forest reforms in there. But from Alaska's perspective, and again, we're a state where we have had half of all of the acreage burned this year. Um, so we're looking to find some substantive reforms. Not very much in this to get excited about for Alaska, where we have both a wildfire problem and a timber problem. The proposal also does too little to help our firefighters or our communities, which are at physical risk from wildfires and economic risk from restrictions on timber harvesting. And I, 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 I'm certainly not alone in this. Again, Senator Cantwell has, has spoken very passionately on this issue, not only in committee, but here on, on the floor. Um, I'm going to, to yield to her in just a moment here. We heard from a representative from the International Association of Fire Chiefs who said, due to the rapidly rising cost of wildland fire suppression, uh, IAFC, the International Association of Fire Chiefs, is concerned that the disaster relief fund could run out of money as it's also used to address hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, and other emergencies. We've also heard from nonprofit organization called the Firefighters United for Safety, Ethics, and Ecology. Their letter to congressional leaders observes that allowing agencies to declare wildfires as disasters simply to access near unlimited funding for suppression will undermine efforts that have been long in the making to shift agencies towards alternative proactive strategies in fire preparedness and planning, fuels reduction, and forest restoration. So Mr. President, I want to find a solution to the fire budgeting problem as much as anyone in this chamber. But the proposal that surfaced during the budget negotiations was not the right way to go. It was not developed in, in the open and transparent manner that we would hope. It was not fully vetted. It's drawn opposition from, from not only members here, but outside groups whose members are on the ground actually fighting these fires. So the solution uh, was to do what we have done, which is fully fund firefighting within the budget that we were given. The, the omnibus is, is our path forward on wildfire funding for this year. It devotes greater resources to fire prevention and hazardous fuels reduction. It contains real money, not an empty account that will be available immediately, and we can use the window that it provides to develop the long-term solutions. And this is where I want to, um, to give encouragement to other members. I am committed. I am committed, as I know that Senator Cantwell is, to working to address the longer-term solutions to these issues. I'm here today to affirm that wildfire management legislation will be a top priority for those of us on the Energy and Natural Resources Committee next year. I know that we come at this from different perspectives. But that's okay. Let's bring our different perspectives, work collaboratively with all members to develop a common sense bill that properly addresses the challenges, that addresses the concerns that Senator Cantwell has articulated when it comes to active forest management, that addresses the concerns that we have with how we deal with our hazardous fuels, how we work 
on the front end to prevent these catastrophic fires. But we need to be working together towards these solutions, and I certainly make that commitment with Senator, with my ranking member, um, uh, to to advance early on in the new year these 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 provisions that I think will make a difference. And I know that Senator Cantwell, um, uh, again, wants to be part of, of not only the solution here, but has been so much a part of the solution as we have worked together in the committee. And with that, uh, Mr. President, uh, I know that um, from, from the Energy and Natural Resources Committee perspective, we've got a lot on our plate, but I think that from my perspective as, as a senator from Alaska, this is an issue that the people in my state feel very passionately about. And I would just ask Senator Cantwell, from a priority perspective for the people of Washington, as we deal with the press, pressing issues that we will have before us, uh, is, this, is this an area where we can come together as an energy committee to address these, these very immediate concerns?